Sara Oeni. I am a journalist who started her career here in the Middle East. I've covered the events here um, for international I've covered the events here for international news organizations and I've worked with local publications. I've worked in radio, broadcast and uh, online publications. Um, the idea for Sijo is uh, to monetize citizen journalism um, as a as someone who's worked for an international news organization during the Arab Spring, I realized that most of the content we were using was coming straight from the citizen journalists, that we had very sparse staff um, in the Middle East, and that it would take about four hours to find the person, talk to the person, make sure the video was right, and actually get the license and okay to use that picture, which is way too long for a news organization. Um, that's why I partnered up with Mohammed al Tanahi. he's actually the managing director of uh, Bright Creations, which is a leading software company here in Egypt. Um, together we've built our site, which is sitjo.me. Our site allows citizen journalists the opportunity to post their content either using their Twitter feed or directly through our site. Um, they can price the content or give it away as a, with a Creative Commons license. And our media organizations then have a professional platform that gives value to the citizen journalism and cuts down their news cycle drastically. Um, and that's basically the general idea of Sitcho. So you're saying that the site's been live for how long? About 14 hours now. Um, <laughs> We actually we've launched a, a soft launch uh, just to make sure that everything that we have developed so far is working properly. We're looking to do our actual our our, our real launch in about a month after we've translated everything into Arabic and turned our interface into an Arabic interface. So it's going to be purely Arabic, or it's going to be dual? It has to be both. both. Um, our contributors, because they're coming from the Middle East, are looking are, are going to be more connected to a site that is in Arabic. They'll appreciate it more, um, and then our media buyers are of course non-Arab speaking so we need to have an English interface for them also. So how long was the development, the started, development take? We started development in January, early January and so until today I mean, they've done an amazing job until today the Bright Creations team has been incredible. So it's all been developed in-house by you? Yes, yes Bright by Creations. the Bright Creations team, yes. Okay. Um, so what's been the biggest challenge from start? The biggest challenge? Development. <laughs> um, well, I think actually the biggest for me. I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure because Mo and I. The, the reason why this works so well is because Mo is the technology person, and I'm, I'm the journalist person. Um, for me, it was. I have this idea of the way journalism is supposed to be, and the way that this is this this site is going to be, and I have a very idealistic. Way, version of, of how the world is supposed to work. So I would be giving Mo all, all these really big, <laughs> let's do it so that we're packaging material and creating stories. And Mo would sit and be like, okay, well, we can have them post material, <laughs> possibly price it, <laughs> and then maybe sell it. But um, it's kind of scaling down the idea, the original idea, to something that's workable from the beginning so that you can eventually get to that big dream that you have for me. Um, no, I'm not sure. I think uh, from uh, my perspective, it's mainly timing. I mean, we've had we haven't really had that much time to get to where we are now. Uh, like three months for development. Uh, you know, my team I think did an excellent job, um, and it's been quite stressful to, to get it to where, to where it is at the moment. Uh, and I think also because uh, you know, also I think it's been quite difficult. Is uh, between uh, Sara and I actually is actually the, the idea is continuously evolving. You know, like you know, we don't have like this. Okay, this is the the package. This is what we're gonna get, and that's it. You know, we're like, okay, this, but we also want this, and then we also want this, and then it's kind of trying to like bring ourselves back a bit, and then kind of bring ourselves forward. And we have, you know, we've been speaking to a lot of mentors, and, uh, a lot of people in the, in the competition as well, and uh, you know, everybody's always giving us new ideas, and you know, some are better than others, and we're trying to integrate those into the idea as well. So it's been quite a challenge, I think. So. Do you have uh, competitors? Do you know of yeah. We do. Um, obviously, there's uh, you know the, there's ones which aren't exact competitors, any. This uh, CNN reports, obviously, uh, but you know journals don't actually get uh, paid for that for adding that content. Uh, and then uh, there's another one based in France and Demotics, which is used maybe not regularly by, by people in Egypt, but there's you know people have heard of it. So that's one of the competitors. And uh, what makes you better? 
much about it? Uh, I think what makes her better is first of all that we're based in the Middle East, uh, you know, very much in touch with, with the people in the Middle East. Obviously the sites are going to be in Arabic, which to Monix does not have. Um, sorry, uh, and Demonix, uh, you know, it's going to be in Arabic as well. Uh, obviously, um, there's uh, there's also the advantage that uh, we you know we're not actually trying we're, because we're based in Egypt. We're also going to be trying to sell our content to areas in the Middle East as well as Europe. Uh, finally, it's also I think our, our technology and you know, our integration with social networks and how we're trying to not only focus on you know you come to our site and upload it but actually you know continue doing what you're normally doing but just let us know and we'll index that and sell that up for you is I think something that's a big advantage. Okay. So going back to the journalist, is there any kind of quality no is there any kind of quality control on the content? I mean because it, I take it your clients are media organizations. They prefer broadcast quality stuff so do you have any kind of curating filtering? Well, uh, while uh, Mo and his team have been working so diligently on the site, I've been doing my, my research on um, different ways to vet and um, to make sure that the content, and verify content. Um, we've developed a four-step vetting process that's quite robust and quite intense. Um, what we do, I mean, our, our initial vetting process that mo none of the social media networks have is that we collect both the email and mobile phone um, for every user that signs up for Sitchu, which means, um, and we verify, as of now, we're verifying email, of course. Uh, mobile numbers will be verified by the time um, we get to our next phase, um, which means that we can contact citizen journalists as soon as they post something that's interesting, make sure that what they're, that they posted it, that it is who they are, who they say they are, that it is where they say that it is, um, and it goes into making sure that they have a good social network standing, that um, somebody else maybe has seen the this type of thing, uh, this type of uh, activity, um, that, and also that the picture itself mm. speaks to the story. I mean, there have been plenty of pictures that we, we collect metadata, so we'll know if it's photoshopped or not, or if it's just been downloaded online um, from the technology aspect. But we look for things like, this: is there a license plate that says must on it? Um, is there a street sign? Is there a building that everybody knows? Um, so is this all done in house? Human. Yes. I mean, this is human human vetting. Okay. Um, it's not done for every single piece of content that comes through because we are doing this Twitter integration mm. and because we do expect a large number of videos and because frankly some of the videos just aren't going to be worth vetting. I mean, now you and I don't may not agree on what's news you may post and there may be a media agency that likes something, but there are going to be videos that we know this is newsworthy. This is going to be. This can be sold. Let's vet it and make sure that it's already vetted for our members and for our premium members. Um, but it's, what's a premium member? Premium members. Well, I mean, they'll have a, a little bit, a few more services than regular free members. Pre -member, premium members will um, be paying for a, additional services such as vetting, um, being able to assign stories to specific journalists, um, being able to have a, access to a network of freelancers that we're developing through through the site. So they'll get extra services, um, and it'll kind of we're hoping that it kind of feels like they have a bureau of people that they're working with through this premium membership. Um, but vetting takes time. It takes about 20 minutes to vet every video. It takes, so that's going to take people, that's going to take energy, so that's why we're placing it into our premium membership and we're kind of holding off on it for now because I'm the only one that can vet in the office right now. So I'll be vetting, right now I'll be on the lookout for interesting stories and I'll be going through the vetting process and vetting things that come in that are the most interesting and will give the media buyers the opportunity to call us and say, hey, I really like this video, I'm not quite sure about it, can you vet it for me? And we'll be able so to when, you, when you're doing the vetting thing and, and you see something which you think is newsworthy, does that mean you're going to be actively pushing it to your media definitely, clients? Definitely, okay. definitely. I mean, I think most citizen journalism sites are doing this. Um, some Because a citizen can take a picture of something and not realize that it's actually valuable. Mm. Um, and, I, and an excellent example of this, um, a very small site that does kind of the same thing. I mean, they're, set, they're auctioning actually video off, uh, but they haven't really picked up their interface isn't that great. But they had someone come up to them with a video of the Deepwater Horizon blast. Uh, and it was the whole thing happening in front of them as it happened. They're the only people that had this video. And when the, 
video, this company actually went to media organizations. They're like, if we had this right away, we would have given you fifty-five thousand dollars for it, at least. They got two thousand for it because it was a month later. So yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for anything interesting that might come in that somebody might not realize is actually a really big news story to vet and, and sell that content. Definitely, there's a sales side. So a technical question then. Um, are you hosting all the videos on your own servers or are you working as a layer on top of? Uh, we're using um, basically a cloud hosting service. So we are actually hosting the videos and the photos actually on our servers. But uh, because it's cloud, it's going to be scalable. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to have to deal with uh, the issues uh, that might arise after, you know, like if suddenly we need to buy a new server and stuff like that. Um, so we've got that sorted. Obviously, the cost of it um, is going to rise uh, as we go along. Um, but uh, I think, you know, if we suddenly realize we have terabytes and terabytes of videos and photos, then we're probably doing a good thing, I think. And, and, and then there's a future. So the revenue model is mainly, you'll be sharing revenue with whoever uploads. Yeah, them. obviously sharing revenue and obviously advertising. Uh, and we'll also be having premium accounts for additional features for, on both sides. So both for the seller and also for the buyer. So certain things we've got hidden under, under the premium membership. So what's the most enjoyable um, part of setting this up for both of you when you start working with Mo. <laughs> working with Sarah. Working see, with Mo. see, yeah, that, would, that would just have to be really nice, right? That's awesome. <laughs> like, you like how I put you no, on I know the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was actually just telling somebody, it's amazing to see the project just come to life. You know, um, I was sitting stuffing these uh, marketing envelopes yesterday at the same spot where I pitched ideas from all the very beginning. And it's just, it's, it's overwhelming, you know, to see something that I, I, I really believe in and that we worked so hard on to just start, like now it's like I, we just gave birth to our newborn. It's kind of like we were pregnant for a while. And <laughs> seriously, it's like we were pregnant for a while with this idea that was in our head and all of a sudden it's now we've been given, we've given birth to it and now it's our child and we're going to watch it grow and we're going to watch it develop and it, it's going to give us a lot of heartache and a lot of sleepless nights but it's fine because we love it and this is what we want to do so that's, yeah, that's the best part. It's really quite great. Top that? I mean, I think it's pretty much the same thing. I think the funnest part has actually been, I mean, I've actually set up a company before and rarely does it take this long, you know, does it come this quick that you actually go from like the idea to actually getting it out there. Mm. Uh, and we've done it extremely quickly and that's amazing because you get the satisfaction very quickly of actually seeing what you've been working so hard at. So I think that's been very satisfying.